I am hopeless. I no longer believe that God has changed me. This is the one truth in life. This world is just a product of chance. How can I believe that God will use my life to make a difference? I know without a shadow of doubt that hope has left me. I can't believe that I thought that youth hopes makes a difference in my life. I know now more than ever I am all alone in this cold world. I must have been a fool to think that they really care about what I'm going through. The staff and volunteers always tell me, Jesus will be there for me during my darkest hours. What a lie, the streets can and will meet my needs. It is just stupid to say God has always been there for me. I finally realized that no matter what I do, the truth is, Jesus doesn't love me. How can I believe that God is for me when I feel like all hope is gone? That was my story before. But now, Christ has changed my life upside down. When I feel like all hope is gone, God is for me. How can I believe that Jesus doesn't love me? The truth is, no matter what I do, I finally realize that God has always been there for me. It is just stupid to say the streets can and will meet my needs. What a lie. Jesus will be there for me during my darkest hours. The staff and volunteers tell me they really care about what I'm going through. I must have been a fool to think I'm all alone in this cold world. I know now more than ever, youth hopes makes a difference in my life. I can't believe that I thought hope has left me. I know without a shadow of doubt, God will use my life to make a difference. How can I believe this world is just a product of chance? This is the one truth in life. God has changed me. I no longer believe that I am hopeless. I hope you enjoyed D. Mays in the Upside Down video that we just watched. He's a neat young man. and Every time I've watched that, I, uh, I am touched by the fact that in D's life and a lot of lives of the youth at Youth Hope, their life can be so upside down in this world, but with the power of God, it turns around and it goes back up and it really brings us to the time we're in right now. Everything seems upside down. It seems surreal. I know many of you are suffering at home. I know many are lonely. We have relatives that are really isolated and lonely. And we're glad to be here with you tonight as a, as a, a friends and family of Youth Hope to say, um, God's got this. God's not surprised. Sarah and I have talked about it. He's not surprised by what's happened or what's going on. In fact, out of all the experts we're hearing from right now, he's the only one that knows when this will end, how it will end, and how we'll end in it. But we also know we're victorious in Christ Jesus, that he's got this in our lives already. So um, I just want to tell you that, a word of encouragement, and tell you we're really, really excited to have you together tonight for our uh, stay-at-home banquet. Yes, we are. And this is different, like everything is different in our world right now. Um, but we like this new different. It, it's good to have you join us in our home. This is our kitchen table and just to kind of have a conversation with you um, to see what's happening at Youth Hope and, and what you have been able to do um, in this past year um, and what's going to continue to happen. Um, I know one thing that's different that, that does make me sad and, and that's a real thing is um, not being able to connect with people face to face. I love the banquet every year. We've had over 30 banquets, and that's my one time. You know, Mark gets to talk to people on the phone and be in his office, and people stop by. And the banquet's the one time that I get to see you face to face. So, um, yeah, I'm sad about that. But like I said, this is just a different way to do a banquet this year. So, welcome. Uh, we're excited. You are going to hear tonight some amazing things our staff are doing in this opportune time to reach kids and teens while they're captive at home and they have taken full advantage of that we are thriving at youth Hope. we're going to go into now what you've accomplished with us this last year and what we typically do during the school year and during the summer but we can't do all typical things now then you're going to hear about the new things we're doing and together we're going to reach a lot of kids and teens for christ right now and throughout this year
hey, what an awesome video. Uh, because of you, you can see the tremendous amount of impact. So many different screenshots of, uh, of the activities and the smiles and staff interaction and all the different great things that uh, are a result of you partnering with us with your resources and your time and your energy. So thank you uh, for that. My name is Chris Britton. I'm the creative arts director for Youth Hope. And I'm sitting here in this empty office and it's very quiet. It's only my voice that's echoing through the walls. And as you can see through the video, as you saw through the video, uh, it's usually full of life and full of activity. Next, I want to introduce you to one of our spectacular staff members. Her name is Camila. She came on uh, last summer as a camp assistant director. Uh, she was a graduate from Illinois State University, and she came on uh, with a with a full heart of joy, wanting to serve our students. And what we didn't know what God was going to do was just uh, change her whole heart, and so much so that she came on staff uh, in the fall and began working with our teen girls at our Moline Youth Center. So next, you're going to hear uh, more of Camila's heart, uh, some things that God has done through her, and you'll also hear from a student that she's continued to mentor named Kiki. When I started at camp, there was a time, maybe on week four or something, we, we were working with high school guys and there was a specific time where we were eating lunch and this kid was sitting by himself. And so I sat with him, took some time and, and just talked to him about what was going on. And through that, he was able to open up his heart to what was going on. And he asked me questions that felt like a movie. He was asking me, is my sin too too much for God to forgive me? And how could God really love me the way you guys are saying that he does? And I was able to share the gospel with him and kind of reaffirm that all of that is true. And through that relationship of talking to him, um, he was able to receive Jesus. And he said the prayer and we were able to give him a Bible too and follow through with what all that entitles and walk through with him through him as a believer and that's been just like a really encouraging time for me just knowing that what we're doing makes a difference and not just in people's lives but in their souls and their eternal life. When I first started working with Kiki it was over the summer and um, what at first was just girls high school week turned out to be a um, one-on-one -on -one relationship with a student that I've seen grow so much. Uh, when I started working with her, she was the CIT for just a week and then it continued on to become basically a leadership program. Through that time, I, I have started working with her as one of our few high schoolers in the midst of a lot of middle schoolers. Um, and she's been just a light to all of our students and all of our girls. She's bold in her speaking. She shares about her life and doesn't let the struggles of her home um, stay there. She uses it to bring it to the light and speak about how much healing there could be in a home. I've seen her grow as a leader. I've seen her grow uh, as a person and just a woman full of the joy and the love of God. And without further ado, here is Kiki with her poem, Broken Crayons. Hi, my name is Kiki Washington. Um, I've been around the center since I was in second grade. Um, I started doing poetry last summer and I wrote a piece called Broken Crayons. I was inspired by a devotional that I was reading. Some days I feel lost and broken, trapped inside a small box, feeling useless, unable to breathe, useless because all of my pain, useless because all of my mistakes. While most mornings paint yellows on top of sky blue, regrets and depression seems to drag out the blacks and grays of the day. That's when life seems dark and dull, and I feel like an outcast, too often pushed to the side, used and mistreated and broken. Imagine being a crayon, used to create not so beautiful pictures, too much violet violence mixed with scarlet silence, wore out and forgotten shoved into an old box, waiting to be replaced in this throwaway kind of society where being broken means you can't be fixed. It wasn't until I experienced God's grace. I cried out. Broken crayons still color, right? God, can broken crayons still color bright? One night, I realized that my brokenness doesn't define me. God paints my portrait through what I'm called to do. I know I stand tall, a masterpiece of brokenness, it gives me strength to shine brighter. God is always able to take my brokenness and create a masterpiece. 
Grace shines across my face, making my broken into a crayon called beautiful. God, let me be your masterpiece. I love hearing the stories of our students and some of our staff like Camila because my story and my journey with, with my faith started here at Youth Hope. Uh, I remember as a student uh, going through the teen programs and being a CIT and being a camp counselor and then coming back and joining full time. Well, one of my best friends, Joe Woods, his life was impacted the same as mine and his journey uh, here at Youth Hope has been awesome as he's been able to come back and continue to serve. Now, I'm going to let him share a bit of his story now. I grew up with my two brothers and my sister uh, living with my mom. And from what I could tell, she was doing the best that she could. And uh, we always had a nice home. We always lived pretty, pretty good of what I thought. And the crazy thing is, is there's always things missing, like food in the fridge, uh, whether it would be uh, gas and light on. Those type of things would be a regular occurrence in our household. And it wasn't until I got older that I realized that some things were a little bit off. Uh, I remember talking one day out loud in the street and said, hey, I got $3 and $2 in food stamps with a smile on my face. And my brother was right next to me. He pulls me over to the side and he says, Joe, that's not something you should be proud of. And I didn't quite understand what he was talking about at the time. And we began to just go to church Sundays, uh, Sunday school. Like it was a occurrence that we did this all the time. We'd go to church religiously and it was a requirement whether I'm going with my mom's mom or my dad's mom, uh, we go to church. And while we're going to church, um, I'm hearing about Jesus and stuff like this, but I really wasn't getting Jesus, I didn't think. Um, but at the whole time, I believed in God, I believed in Jesus. And one day in my life, I get in trouble. And around this time, my sister uh, finds this place called Christian Friendliness that she starts to attend. So my mom has a good idea in her head. She says, Joe, you're going to join your sister and go to Christian Friendliness. I thought to myself, that sounds like a weird name, um, but okay, I'll go. Uh, so when I get there, I find out the kids call it CF, which I'm like, okay, this sounds a lot better to me <laughs> um, as a student going there. And it was just great to see like all the people that were coming there and like from different backgrounds. And from what I could tell, it was sort of like they all were there for something. I'm there for something. I don't know what yet, but I'm there. And the youth director at the time gives, gives a message, and I'm like, huh, You're talking about me? You're talking to me um, at this time. And for me, that, that moment, I'm like, all right, God, I'm, I'm listening, I'm listening. And so week after week goes by, and sooner or later, uh, the Moline Center opens up, uh, and they start picking me up and driving me here to the Moline Center because I already lived in Moline, so it was beneficial for me to come up here. And that day I said, you know what? I'm going to give my life to Christ. And so after we watched this video, I ended up giving my life to Christ. And if you listen to Mark Drake ever tell a story about Moline Center and uh, somebody who ever gave their life to Christ, he's talking about me as being the first person to do it in this room that we're standing in right now, we're recording in. Uh, it's now the, the book room. And I can't believe that I'm standing here now um, telling you guys this story because this part of the story is um, I'm working for Youth Hope after this shortly as teen staff. Um, I didn't know that later in my years I would actually end up walking away um, from from this. And when I walked away I made some bad moral choices and it affected me to the point to where I didn't know if I'd ever come back to Youth Hope or the point that I'd ever come back into the church doors or to the point that I'd ever turn to God. Um, but it was through the consistency of Youth Hope, the team here, just reaching out to me, giving me godly dis uh, uh, disciplines and, and things like that to, to nurture me into God's grace. And by them showing me that, I was like, oh, okay, makes sense. And so I come back, and, and when I come back now, it's uh, me and my wife, who my wife I met through uh, youth hope uh, years 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 ago but we didn't hook up until we got older in our years um, and then we got married 
And so I came back here, and now I'm the person that is driving the vehicles uh, to different locations to pick up the students. I'm the one that's sharing the messages. I'm the one that's uh, trying to get people involved and, and show, them, show them that hope that I was given, show them that grace that I was given. Um, and it, it comes down to the people here at Youth Hope really care about the, the students that come through these doors. And to me, Youth Hope is not just a place. It is a family, an extended family of grace and love. Thank you. With much uncertainty, Youth Hope is not able to operate in the same way. Our normal routines have come to a halt. Our doors are closed. Youth centers sit empty. Our camp patiently awaits an embrace from children's laughter. Kids have questions. Families are figuring out new normals and the amount of teen challenges continue to persist. Experts say youth spend around nine hours a day with digital technology and one in every four teens receive sexually explicit images or texts. One in five mobile searches are for pornography and one in five kids in our community struggle with hunger. Experts say isolation can increase effects of depression and every 100 minutes a teenager takes their own life. Yes, these are unique times that beg for unique strategies and at Youth Hope, we've developed innovative ways to continue doing what we've always done, bring youth hope. Him, like he was at home with his kids and I didn't know that and I didn't like realize that he would be doing that because I was still young and like so I asked him if he could bring us some food and he went all the way back to youth hope he went in the pantry and um he drove to our house and he brought a bunch of food for us and I was so happy and I was so, like, I thank God so much. And 
so then like that's youth hope is just they help me out like a lot like a lot my sister's two years older than me so she was in third grade i was in first grade she was in third grade and um she started going to youth hope and i wanted to go too and i especially wanted to go when she went to camp i started going and around like fourth or fifth grade um i went to camp and it was everything i expected and more i went zip lining for the first time uh a lot of embarrassing things happened there but it's all part of the learning process now when i go there i'm a whole like i'm a cool kid i know the place well i'm like i'm an og then a couple years later jeremy came along and um he helped me through like um a lot of my middle school problems like um like i'm not going to say anything in specific but he helped me a lot and um that was like that meant a lot to me that um i could have like kind of a father figure cuz i don't have like a father that i live with that's like there for me so he was like kind of a father figure and he really helped me out and i think my mom really appreciated that like especially and so um i think if youth hope wasn't like in my life i don't know where i'd be right now i don't know if um i'd be like getting a's and b's in class or if um i'd have the friends i have right now or uh like i don't know so yeah youth hope has helped me like get my life on track whenever it went off track and um yeah hello my name is jeremy wernley i'm a youth specialist for youth hope i've been leading the youth program at the moline center for 3 years now suleiman was one of the first young men that i got to have a relationship with that really went beyond the four walls of Youth Hope. About three months in, I remember the first time I took him out to get some food, we're sitting outside the restaurant um, at their picnic table area, just looking onto the beautiful avenue of the cities and uh, just talking about life. And eventually we started talking about God. And I remember and in my mind, I was trying to think of the right way um, to share these things about God that a child can understand. Probably many of you can relate to that especially parents, and he started replying in a way that I realized I did not need to do that. <laughs> when we just started having a great conversation by God and the wisdom and knowledge that was in him was blowing me away, and I learned so much, and we were able to learn and grow together, and that's how it is with Youth Hope. It's relationships, and we learn and grow together. But Youth Hope facilitated this relationship. I wouldn't even know this young man if had I not became a youth specialist. Listening to his story makes me realize, man, my last three years have mattered and meant something to someone. And even if it was just that one person, that was enough to make it all worth it. All the late nights, all the things that you go through, the hard work, it matters. And, uh... And I know it's not just one life, it's many lives. So I've gotten to partner with Youth Hope, and I hope that you choose to partner with Youth Hope as well. There's many ways to do that, and perhaps you already are. But you can um, ask yourself and search your heart, am I doing it to the fullness that um, is for me right now? It's something I often ask myself. So I'm going to turn things over to Chris Britton, who has been a source of counsel and friendship for me. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a different kind of experience for us doing this banquet, but our prayer is that we communicate it well. Uh, what's, what's happened as a result of your resources in the past and your partnership in the past. Uh, hopefully we painted a great picture of what God's continue to do through this organization uh, and what uh, we are trying to do as we launch in the future. Uh, we're super excited. We're thankful. Uh, our goal uh, at this at this banquet in this format is a hundred thousand uh, or more. So we're we're praying that you can partner with us in a way where we can continue to do this impact uh, as we're innovating so many different ideas uh, of, of ministry. Uh, 
So we're continuing to be faithful on the front lines and uh, we're praying and hoping that uh, our supporters will be continuously um, just giving in this time. So I want to turn it over to Hannah uh, and she's going to be able to give you all the nuts and bolts of how you can specifically uh, give and partner with us financially or with your resources to see uh, this ministry continue to make an impact in the Quad Cities area. Now is the part of our at-home banquet where you get to invest in the future of kids and teens. This is an opportunity to put our faith into action, trusting that we will not only make it through these uncertain times, but we will emerge stronger, wiser, more hopeful, and more compassionate than ever. Luke 6:38 says, Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, crushed down, full, and running over, they will give to you. For in the same measure as you give, it will be given to you again. You are essential for us to keep pursuing kids and teens and bringing hope. There are several ways that you can make an investment in the lives of our kids and teens. But before we move forward, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather together online and for the technology that you've bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord, for protection for every person who is watching, that you will bless them and their families to give them good health and prosperity in these uncertain times. We thank you for everything that you're doing through Youth Hope and for every single kid and teen that comes through our doors. We thank you and we praise you for the love that you have for us. We thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And in his name we pray, amen. For those of you who are watching on Facebook, you can make your donation directly through the Youth Hope page on the donate button. If you are watching on YouTube, click the link below the video and be directed to our donation page. You may also make a donation through our website, which is www.cfyouthhope.org and designate it for the at-home banquet. If you're not wanting to make a gift online, that's fine. Please feel free to call us at 309-762-4577 and we'll process your donation over the phone. Or you can mail your check to the Youth Hope office at 3928 12th Avenue, Moline, Illinois, 61265. If you have other ways of giving, like legacy gifts or bequests, feel free to call us. We would love to talk to you about ways that you can get involved and invest in our future. We're so grateful for you and your support, and you are ensuring that we continue to bring youth hope. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us for our first ever at-home banquet. At a typical banquet, you would have been dismissed now, but since you're already at home, Feel free to join us for an awesome worship set with our very own Youth Hope staff, Ashley Dean. Hey y'all, my name is Ashley and I am a part of the REACH team here at Youth Hope. I'm housed in Rock Island, but we are all family here. I am coming because I'm here to sing for you and not just sing for you, but more so worship with you. In the midst of all that we're experiencing, the chaos, the turmoil, the uncertainty about what is to come, I think it's best for us to shift our focus to God and ask him to meet us in this place again. We need his presence, right? And the joy of the Lord is our strength. He will help us to get through. So this is here again by Elevation Worship. Join me in worship. Feel free to lift your hands, to clap, to call upon the Lord, because that's going to be happening right here, too. So. <laughs> Can't go back to the beginning. Can't control what tomorrow will bring. But I know here in the middle, is the place where you promise to be i'm not enough unless you come will you meet me here again because all i want is all you are will you meet me here again 
Father, we need you. We need your presence. And your presence is the fullness of joy in your right hand, our pleasures forevermore. God, we need you. As I walk now through the valley, let your love rise above every fear. Like the sun shaping the shadows in my weakness your glory appears I'm not enough unless you come will you meet me here again cause all I want is all you are can you meet me here again i'm not enough unless you come will you meet me here again because all i want is all you are will you meet me here again oh god we need your presence fill this room fill the room of our hearts god the room of our minds let your presence just overtake us god we thank you for being mindful of us even in this time God, you're wonderful. You're worthy, God. Yeah. Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Not for a minute were we forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. He's here right now. God, we thank you. We're not enough unless you come. Will you meet us here again? Cause all we want is all you are. Will you meet us here again? Oh, we're not enough unless you come. Will you meet us here again? All we want is all you are. Will you meet us here again? Know that you're not forsaken in this time, that he is mindful of you, that God is mindful of his children, and he will never leave us nor forsake us. He is here right now. Continue to seek him. And I pray that his love surrounds you and that the peace of God overtake you in this time. God bless you all.